get ready to get the laser at your cutter set up here. So in order to do this, you're going to need to have taken off everything to do with the 3D printing bed. You need your four plates here and ten of your M4 by 10 screws. Okay, so now we have the plate all hooked up. Nice and neat, got the screws on here. Uh, next set is to get the machine tool head switched over. So now we have the laser head for the tool attached here to the bar at the top. You can use the same four bolts on the back that you use to install the 3D printer head to install this. We have this hooked up. Now we're going to get the wires hooked up. So we have our first piece here of our wood. Um, they're kind of hard to see. You know, in the book it says that the silicone plugs are white, but to each corner, upper and lower here, I have four of the silicone plugs to prevent this from going anywhere during operation. The next step is going to be to turn it on and get it calibrated. Alright, so the next step, we have everything hooked up, the tool head, the work pieces in place. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the snap maker for the initial setup. Now, supposedly this thing is supposed to automatically recognize the tool that it's attached to, which it did with the 3D printer. For as much money as this thing cost, it better. Something I like that I read in the instructions is we're supposed to be able to teach it its limits for where it's supposed to work at. We're sure we're going to get in that in a minute, but I, don't know, I thought that was really cool. So while this is loading up, if anybody's got anything, you know, let's say like a comment or something you want to share an experience, I'd like to hear somebody else's stuff on this. Let's see, safety instructions. It did automatically recognize this is the laser. This is a class 4 laser. Children require supervision, blah, 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 blah. Operate laser and ventilated environment. Means I should probably crack a window. Always unplug the machine before performing maintenance or modification. Yeah, I would hope so. Anyway, next. Is that the... Measure the thickness of the material and fix the material to the work table using fixtures. Enter thickness. Okay, so I'm going to have to take a quick measurement on this. I'll let you know what it is when the video starts back up. Okay, so I've went ahead and I've set the material thickness to 1.5 millimeters. Uh, it does actually say the thickness of the test material thickness in the setup guide. I went ahead and used a pair of um, calipers on my own. It came up to 58 thousandths, which is 1.473 millimeters. Unfortunately, you cannot get that technical with this. It goes either 1.4, 1.5, so I'm just going to round it up. That way we make sure we get the full penetration of it. Okay, so we have that in. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Okay, work table height. Before running the autofocus procedure, the machine needs to know the height of the work table. Next. Okay, so the tool head is zeroing out to the Y. X came back, now we're going forward. Carefully lower the laser module to the surface of the material and tap next. With the known material thickness, the machine will calculate automatically. Whoa, I thought that was going to crash. Will calculate automatically the exact height of the work table. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to say real quick that where this is at is probably the center of the table. I don't have the piece centered exactly. Also, the work piece is slightly convexed in this orientation. Um, I'm going to take real quick. 
and I'm actually going to no, I'm going to leave it. I was going to flip it, but I'll leave the high point in the middle. That way I don't have to worry about it running into anything. That sounds like a better solution to me. <clears throat> okay, so... I'm going to hit next. No. Let's see, down. Um, point one. I didn't act, I don't think I actually got it to touch yet. I can't see between the tooling head and the workpiece right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on this. Make sure you have on a pair of the laser safety goggles before you set up laser module and wear them throughout the laser engraving and cutting process. Okay, well, let me grab those real quick. Set work origin, go to work origin, run boundary. That's what we wanted. Okay. So we're going to go to next. The machine will engrave a few lines. Slightly different Z offsets. It will recognize the optimal engraved line and save the focal length measured. Make sure you have on a pair of the laser safety glasses before you tap start. Well, here we go. We're going to hit start. I can smell the wood burning. That does get bright very quick. Processing. Oh no, autofocus has failed. Sorry, the camera cannot recognize the normal the optimal engraved lines. Please tap failure to reselect the best engraved line manually. Okay, so I'm going to say probably center this is Probably has something to do with the warped board. We're going to take a quick look at this. That's what we got. Just on the uh, fail safe side, though, I'm going to stick with the middle. Just back down. Save here. Camera calibration. Whenever you reinstall the laser module, you need to run the camera calibration procedure to ensure that the camera functions properly. Okay. With a piece of white paper, no less than 150 by 150 millimeter, to the center of the work table using provided fixtures, the machine will cut a square on the paper to calibrate the camera's perimeters. Alright, so I'm going to get a piece of paper and throw that up there and we're going to see how that works. So I have the piece of paper on the grid over here. It's going to cut a square in it. Let's tap this button. Ooh. 
a little bit of a lens flare there with the laser. That's kind of cool. Three. This is really cool. I can't wait to see what all this can do. Back the camera up a little bit. See everything. <clears throat> right now it says it's processing photo one of four part of the camera calibration processing photo 204 processing photo 3 of 4 Processing photo 404. Complete. All right, so the calibration for the camera is successful and it is done. I'm gonna hit complete on here. Awesome, you have successfully completed the initial setup for laser engraving and cutting. Now you can prepare the G-code file using Snapmaker Lubin to start engraving or cutting. So there it is, there is the opening to setting up, calibrating your laser for the Snapmaker 2.0. Um, this is really cool, this is great, I hope you guys like this, and we'll have another video up soon. Thanks for watching, this is Thumb FPV.